Hey, what's up you two? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a Subway restaurant. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please do hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. This is the first city build that I have made in a really long time. And if you guys would like to see more of these and more remakes of my older builds, but made much better and to a much better scale that you can build in your cities, I'd just really appreciate it if you could let me know in the comments and hit that like button. And not only that, I will also show you how to make the inside, which you're going to have to to make it to the end to see. But without any further ado, let's get started. Now, before we begin building, I think it's important to tell you that these are all of the materials that we are going to be using to make the outside of our subway. And the amounts of those materials should be visible as well. And now for a very different set of materials, these are the materials that we will be using for the inside of our subway. I will show you these inside materials again later on just in case you want to focus on the outside. The amount of space required to make subway is a 16 by 17 block area. This will also include the small car park outside of the front of the building. I would make this grid if you are making this in a city. Please pause the video, make sure that you have all of those materials, make sure you have enough of them, and once you are ready, we can begin. So, step one, I'm going to come all the way to the front left hand corner of the grid. If you have no interest in the grid, bear with me one second. Move inwards by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then right by one. This is the starting position. I want you to place six terracotta coming up from the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go right by five. One, two, three, four, five. Go up by two. One, two. Go left one, up one. Left by three. One, two, three. Go down, left, down. I want you to place a layer of birchwood planks behind the empty space that we have created. It looks very much like a Tetris block, but the birchwood planks add quite a bit to the build. What I also want you to do is prepare the roof by placing a stone slab on top of this terracotta block right here. Extend the stone slab to the right and then take this right slab extend it towards you in one then up in up in up Extend both of these to the left and then take this bottom left hand side block and extend it left down left down left this will be important later I also want you to extend the right side of this entrance down to the ground using terracotta. To put this into perspective, this is where the entrance is. And I want you to place black concrete coming inwards diagonally from both sides. Extend the black concrete up by two on each side with black glass in between. I then want you to place, or better yet, first of all destroy between the entrance, place stone slabs in there, and then oak doors, just to kind of like better personify that this is where the entrance is indeed is. What I then want you to do is above here, above the entrance line, between the two rows of terracotta, I want you to place yellow concrete, green, yellow, green. Do the same pattern on top to fill in the empty space and take the bottom row and extend it one row towards you. Like that. Now we're going to focus on the rest of the restaurant. I'm going to take the bottom right corner of the entrance and I'm going to extend it backwards by one using terracotta. We're then going to extend right by eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then upwards by six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Extend all the way over to the left and connect back to the entrance as you do it. 
by the way, like that. And then extend down, like so. And from the outside, I then want you to place a row of vertical terracotta like this to turn this into a box. Place two rows of green concrete coming down from the top of the build. Then place a row of terracotta. This is the window space. The window space is very simple. All we have to do is place some white concrete on the ends of the window space that is indeed vertical. And then black stained glass in between. Like this. So from the outside looking in, we'll have something which should look like that. Later on, we will elaborate with the rest of the build and we will add details and stuff that will look really good. Come to the top right corner of the build and moving backwards from this corner block, place seven terracotta. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want you to extend that seventh block down to the ground. I also want you to place two rows of green concrete directly underneath the rows of terracotta and fill in the right side of the build using terracotta. Build down from the ground, up towards the top. We have to do the back of the build also. So, on the back of the build, we pretty much want to copy the front. We start by extending this top block to the right by 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Connect all the way down to the ground. Then we want to place an additional row of terracotta on the inside of the right. Two rows of green concrete underneath the top to keep with that subway branding. And then terracotta building up from the ground. There is no window on this particular back part of the build. I then want you to extend this row of terracotta on the right, one row towards you. Then extend it one row upwards. And then right up, right by three, down, right, extend it down to the ground to give us this shape. This shape is very important indeed. I want you to leave two rows from the top and then place a horizontal row of terracotta. The reason that we're doing this is because we're going to place birchwood planks behind this empty space that we have created same as we have on the front. We're then going to place two rows of terracotta coming down, one, two, seal it up at the bottom, and then on the inside of this, we're going to have white concrete coming in from each end of the empty space, black glass in between, and that will give us a very nice effect like this. On the left side of the build, we simply seal it up using just terracotta there. Really isn't too much more else to it. So, just use your terracotta, go from top to bottom, and you don't have to stop until you eventually get to the top, which is probably a song. You want to do the same thing on the opposite side, meaning you just want to connect the right side to the left or the front to the back as we are. Place a row of terracotta here as well to kind of like just solidify the shape that we have to the left of us. We're going to use stone slabs now and stone slabs are going to go all the way around at the base of the shape that we have just made and we are going to fill in a roof. The roof is stone slabs, it's half a row down from the top of the build and it will look very good once complete, like this. I'm going to take the roof that we have on the front and I'm going to extend it towards the back. And I'm going to make sure that the roof on the back is the exact same as the front in absolutely all manners. I'm not going to explain it again, but I'm sure that you guys will be able to put yourself in a position where you can bloop, where you can copy the front onto the back. I'm going to place, of course, stone slabs extending from the front block oh no. From the front blocks all the way to the back blocks. Unless you fancy extending both rows front to back, I would highly suggest only doing the top layer of stone slams. It will be irrelevant. It will be irrelevant to do both of them as we are going to be putting like an internal ceiling in the place. Like this isn't what the roof will look like from the inside. 
So now that we have this, we have actually done like a huge part of the build. It looks really good already. But, my friends, it could look better. So, out the front of the build, we want to have a path. The path is going to lead from the entrance all the way to where I have the, the end of the grid. And the path is going to be made out of stone slabs. So, I want you to fill in this area here using stone slabs. Of course, depending on your city, you might have a different sort of length of path and shape and you might blend the build into the environment in a different way. But, I'm also going to extend these two rows of stone slabs here, just poking out the front of the entrance. These two rows I'm going to extend all the way over to the right and they are going to connect just in front of the window. So, I'm just going to have all of this made into pathway. Depending on your sort of city or location or wherever you're planting these, I mean, you might plant them in different places in your world. If you're working on a city, of course, you might already, you, you know, you might already have one of these. But if you're working on little towns and stuff that's spurt off from the city or maybe retail parks and what have you, then you might want to build more than one of these. Maybe even attach them to gas stations and stuff. But, the fact of the matter is, mine has a path that leads just out of the front like this. And more importantly, there's a little parking area. I'm going to run a row of white concrete just right of the inside of the long path coming out the front. I'm going to dig three rows to the right, and I'm going to have another vertical row of white concrete as well. I want to do that one more time, one, two, three, and then have a vertical row of white concrete. These are the separations between the spaces. If you dig out all of this mess here, all of the grass or whatever it is you might be dealing with, we are going to place, as I said, car park, car park spaces in there. And these car park spaces are very easy to make, and as a matter of fact, we're going to use jungle leaves, grey concrete, both carpets, string, cobblestone wall, birch fence, sea lanterns, and some birch trap doors for these next parts. Fill in the car parking spaces with grey concrete, or alternatively, whatever material you might be using for roads. That is going to vary from person to person, depending on what you're using as a road. I'm going to use yellow carpet on the ends of these spaces as a little bumper between there and what we're going to be having over there. I'm going to place jungle leaves around the outside of the build. These builds can be made completely by themselves. This can be like a one-off in your city, or you might be building it into a condensed area. This will determine whether you're going to have any sort of jungle leaves or wall or anything around it. It completely depends on how your city is laid out. Now that we have done this, there is a light at the end of the path. Right here. It's made out of a cobblestone wall, two birch fence, we're going to stick a sea lantern coming inwards with birch trap doors on the sea lantern and the fence. Above the window that we have here, we're going to place string. Now, the string only has to be in front of the top row of the window, like this. It wants to be level with the white concrete and the glass. And going from left to right, I'm going to place white, uh, yellow carpet, followed by green carpet coming across the front like that. It's a small detail, but it really does make quite a bit of difference. Now, the part that I have been dreading, ladies and gentlemen, I've not been looking forward to this. The letters. Yes. What separates this from a weird random building is the fact that we are going to write Subway across that green strip right there. And it's actually going to be quite difficult for us. And that's because we have so many materials on us. And you know what? Let us let us actually use all the, the rest of the stuff that we're going to be needing before we tackle this. Grab torches, birch fence, birchwood stairs, and some weighted pressure plates. I'm going to place torches either side of the entrance because light is fun. I'm going to place a set of chairs underneath the window here, just so people can enjoy their sandwiches out in the sun. I'm a nice guy like that. I want people to enjoy themselves at my Subway restaurant. So, I'm going to place, right in the middle of these spaces, a birch fence that corresponds with, with the, like, the space middle. 
And I'm going to place birchwood stairs left and right of this and a weighted pressure plate on top. And that is basically just a little bit of a seating area for people to sit and eat the sandwiches. Again, I want people to be comfy. I'm going to dump these materials now. I'm also going to dump all of these other materials and these ones. The reason that I'm keeping these ones is because we are now going to work on the banners, my least favorite part. Drop a crafting table. Okay, so step number one for the banners. We have to crack open our crafting table and we have to place a banner in the center of the table. We're going to place white dye coming across the top of the banner and grab the resort. Place the banner in the table again and place a horizontal row of white dye coming across the bottom of the banner and grab the resort. We're going to then place the banner in the middle and we're going to place a diagonal row of white dye coming across the uh, coming across diagonally top left to bottom right corner. Grab the resort. Then this is the easy part put the banner in the center of the table and place green dye all the way around it to solidify the S. And this is the most satisfying part. Place an S in the first row of the green that you have above the front window. Next banner, you. Not not you, not, not, not literally you, you. So use quite easy. We want to place a green banner in the center of the table a strip of white dye coming up the left side, grab the resort, swap the dye to the right side after putting the uh, after putting the uh, banner back in the table in the middle, grab the resort, place the banner back in the table and have a horizontal row of white dye coming across the bottom and now the easy part, you want to put the banner right in the middle of the table again and we're going to place green dye all the way around the outside. It makes the letters look a lot cleaner. And that is U. Place that next to the S. And again, you'll slowly be liberated by how much time this is taking. You'll feel a lot better as each letter gets added. Okay, B is also really easy too. So, green banner, center of the table. And place a strip of white dye coming up the left. Grab the resort. And then chuck it back in the table. Place it on the, in the middle again and place a horizontal row of white dye coming up the right side. Grab it and place it back in the middle of the table, a horizontal row of white dye across the top. Grab it and place the resort back in the table with a horizontal row of white dye coming across the bottom. Grab it, chuck it once again, well place it now in the top middle of the table and place a horizontal row of white dye coming across the middle. Grab the result, put a finishing touch on this thing by placing it in the middle of the table with green dye all the way around the side of it, like that. I, I'm a bit silly, that's white dye in the middle there, I should know that. <laughs> Grab the result and now we can place a B next to there. Ah, oh, that looks nice. Sub. We're halfway. Okay. First, we're going to want to, and this is where things swap up a little bit, and for some reason, I don't have my yellow on me, so I'm, j I'm just going to have to grab it, but that would have been in the material list, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, for some reason, I've misplaced my yellow dye. So, first, we're going to chuck a green banner right in the bottom of the table, and we're going to place yellow dye left, right, and above it like this. Grab the banner, and place it in the bottom center of the no place it in the center of the table and place green dye left right and below like this grab the result of that and place the banner in the middle of the table place yellow dye coming up the left side grab the result of that and place the banner back in the table place yellow dye directly to the right of the banner Grab the result, chuck it back in the table, and surround it using green dye. Nice. So now we have our W, and we can place it all the way up here. Two more left to do. So now we're going to come back to the table, 
and we're going to do A. Green banner in the middle, row of yellow die coming across the top. Grab that and place it in the middle of the table with yellow die coming up with yellow die on the left side. Grab the end result, chuck it back in the table, yellow die coming down the right side. Grab it, place it in the top middle of the table and place a row of yellow die coming across the middle. Grab the end result of that and put the finishing touch of green die all the way around. And that will give us our A. Thank you. Now that we've done that, we can move on to our final letter. Our final letter is of course Y. So, first we are going to place the banner in the left middle of the table with a, a, a vertical, rather a diagonal row of yellow, top left to bottom right. Grab the end result of that and chuck the banner in the middle of the table. Place two rows of green die below the banner. Grab the end result of that and chuck it back in the table and I do believe we're going to chuck it in the left middle part of the table with a row of yellow die coming diagonally, I wish that the controls were a little bit better, coming diagonally, top right corner, bottom left corner. Grab the banner, back in the table once more, and then green die, I just chucked my green die away, come back, come back, there we go. Back in the middle of the table, and of course green die all the way around the outside, perfect. Which would be why, as in, why did this take so long? <laughs> And then we stick a Y right there, and oh, perfecto. Look at that. That is lovely. So now that looks 10 times better. But now we have to move on to the inside of the build, ladies and gentlemen. So just to remind you, here are all of the materials that we are going to be using for the inside of the build, please. Pause the video if you have to, gather those materials and the amounts, and once you have them all, we can continue. Alright ladies and gentlemen, I have gathered all of the materials that I'm going to be using, once you have grabbed them as well, we can begin. So, the first thing that we're going to do is of course, head inside. Inside, the first thing that we have to do inside is add the ceiling. The ceiling sits above the window and above the door and it's made out of white concrete. The ceiling is, that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. We are also going to be adding some sea lanterns to it, but I am going to give you the choice of what sort of pattern to add the sea lanterns as well. But once you have indeed added all of the white concrete for the ceiling, then you can kind of make these decisions. So that's what it wants to look like. So now we've made the ceiling completely white. It's up to you how you add light into the ceiling. My personal favorite way is to have two lots of sea lanterns every so often coming down the ceiling. So one row away from the window on the back and one row away from the window on the front, I'm going to have a double set of sea lantern lights that are equal parts away from each other. How many is it from the wall there? Equal parts away from each other, and I'll show you what it looks like. Or, you can easily just have like a whole set of sea lanterns going up the middle of the roof. It kind of depends on how you like it, but one row away from the windows on the front, one row away from the windows on the back, and then two rows away from the wall on both sides, and you can get a pretty nice looking ceiling. I'm going to seal up around these windows using terracotta. So the terracotta can actually come across as far as you like. It can come all the way around and up here. Uh, I'm also going to add terracotta underneath this window also. I'm going to turn the floor into birchwood planks. Now a lot of the floor is actually going to be covered up using carpet, but I like the birch wood in conjunction with the rest of the colour palette and oak wood is a little played out for me, hence why I'm using a bit of birch. And for some reason, the, the colours just seem to resonate with me more. I like the colour combination of birch using the yellow and the green and the white as well. Like, it just seems to look a little bit nicer. And with the black concrete too, it contrasts a little bit nicer. So that's, you know, kind of up to you. So now we kind of have a blank canvas on the inside of the build, right? 
First, we're going to have to make the sandwich station. The sandwich station is going to begin in the middle of the wall here on the right side, and we're going to place a row of one, two, three, four, five, six iron coming out from the wall. In front or behind the first three iron, I want you to place cauldrons. In front of the cauldrons, I want you to place glass pane and extend it one row further than the cauldrons. On this back wall here, I want you to place a double white concrete parallel to the iron, and I'm going to place a brewing stand and then a furnace just to the right. I'm going to chuck these materials away for a second, and I'm going to grab this second row of mine. And I'm going to place on top of each cauldron an oak trap door. I'm also going to place an oak trap door just here so people can't like move through. Going to place a trip wire hook above the brewing stand because it looks a little bit more like a coffee machine to me. And on the wall behind the cauldrons, I'm going to place item frames. Bread's going to go in one, and then whatever you might want to chuck on sandwiches in the other two. So whether that, that means you want to chuck like chicken in one, or rabbit, or pork chop, whatever you want to put in the fish, and maybe even a veggie if you like, feel free to do that in the item frames. I'm going to place a green carpet and a yellow carpet on the end here just because it's kind of like subway colours. And now that we have done that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to focus on the rest of the build a little bit. I want you to place birch fence underneath this window here. I want you to place one, two, three, four birch fence coming outwards. And we're actually going to carpet this area here. But before we carpet it, just before we carpet it, I want you to grab the anvil and the jungle leaves. And in this corner here, next to the door, I'm just going to place jungle leaves on top of the anvil. Just because it kind of works, right? It just kind of works. And I'm going to have the carpet, as I said. The carpet is going to start from in front of the anvil and it is going to alternate between green and yellow. They're the branding colours for Subway. It's very recognisable. It looks great. And that is what I'm going to use in a checkerboard pattern, chessboard pattern, drafts pattern, an alternating pattern using both of those colours. I think that that looks really good. Okay, now that we've done that, we just have to focus on the rest of the restaurant now. So, on this back wall here, we have a couple of tables. Table 1 goes right here, one row away from the door. Table 2, here, one row away from the wall. I'm going to chuck away these materials, and what uh, what do I need? I need uh, quartz stairs, birch fence, uh, pressure plate, paintings. I'm going to probably use a little bit of a torch as well, and I don't think I need anything else, do I? Okay, so on top of the fence, I'm going to use a weighted pressure plate. Uh, this back table here, gonna have back-to-back -back quartz stairs. This table at the front, just one... <laughs> just gonna have one quartz stairs like this. And then, what else am I gonna do? Well, I want a painting right in the middle of this wall. So, however you want to apply the painting, it's completely up to you, but... No. 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 No! No! Yes, perfect. I'm going to have a painting right in the middle of that wall. And I'm also going to have just a couple of torches just behind the door like this. And that, that, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, that's kind of, kind of our subway. Kind of complete. I mean, if you want to add a couple of things, like if you want to add chests and stuff, then that's alright. But this is, this is simple. This is something that you can easily build in your city. And it's, it's kind of done. Like, if we come outside, you know... It's, uh, it's kind of perfect. Let me let me get rid of all this stuff. Well done, by the way, for building this. This is awesome. So this is what your subway will look like once it is 100% fully completed. And if I dare say so myself, it's a really good-looking subway. Whether you want to make just one of these or many of these, I think that you could build plenty of these around your city. I mean, they're absolutely everywhere. The outside looks great. It's nice and recognizable. Plenty of branding, plenty of colors, and on the inside, it's the same. It's simple yet elegant and it completely has everything that you would expect to find in a sandwich shop and uh, yeah ladies and gentlemen I, I hope that you have enjoyed my first city build 
coming back. This is the first city build that I've made in a really long time. It's actually a remake of the old one, except this one, you can actually build it in your cities and it makes sense and it, it will fit perfectly. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate all of you for watching. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. It really helps me out. It really, really does. I'm going to be doing more city-related builds if you want them. That's the most important thing. If you like the videos, it's going to help me out a lot and it will let me know what you want to see. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more city builds. It is going to be happening. Feel free to suggest which one you want to see next as well. Click the little bell next to the subscription button. That's the best thing that you can do. And that is pretty much everything. I'm going to be making a brand new city builds playlist, which you'll be able to check out in the card system and the description below and at the top of the description and in the top of the comments. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I've really enjoyed designing this. I've really enjoyed making it. I hope that you guys enjoyed it too. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.